Hello and welcome to another computing video. Now in this video I'm going to introduce the language JavaScript fairly quickly or to give it its more official name ECMA script and the version that we're going to look at is version 5 because that's what you can reasonably expect most modern browsers to support. Um, so the first thing I want to say about it is well JavaScript doesn't actually have that strong a relationship to Java. It was called JavaScript for marketing purposes. Um, the language was originally designed by someone called Brendan Eich at Netscape uh, shortly before they released the Netscape browser. And it was written quite quickly and it was designed for um, doing small animations on web pages. And so it was originally a little language that's quite quick to get into and lets you do little things quite easily. Um, but since then it has grown to become the de facto programming language of the web and a really, really important language to know. Um, the next thing to know about it is it was standardized as ECMA script, as I said at the beginning of the video. So it's got an official name, which is ECMA script, which is not a brand name. Um, and so the versions are sometimes called ES3, ES5, ES6, for instance. So if you uh, Google those and look, look them up on search engines or Stack Overflow or programming sites, when they're talking about ES5, ES6, they're talking about versions of JavaScript. This standardization was relatively important because, um, well, there was a while when it could behave a little bit differently across browsers. Microsoft had a thing called JScript that they put into Internet Explorer, and it didn't behave in identical ways. Um, but these days, when we're writing programs that we want to operate on the web, we'd like them to work whether they're written in, uh, whether they're loaded in Safari or Firefox or Chrome or whatever browser that you're using. And so this standardization helps uh, helps ECMA script to um, behave a bit more consistently across browsers. There may still be inconsistencies in some uh, web technologies here and there, but by and large, the browsers are trying to become more consistent with each other. It's a language that is still alive and under development. And so I'm going to be showing you ES5, which is the version that uh, most modern browsers can understand. Uh, but there is ES6 already out there. And ES6 uh, makes some efforts to try and make it a, behave a bit more how developers might expect. Um, JavaScript is quite easy to get into, but it's got some quirks. Amongst those quirks are its way of doing variable scoping is a little bit unusual. Its way of doing inheritance is also a little bit unusual. And because it's a dynamically and weakly typed language, as we'll see, uh, it be can become harder to think about what's going on in larger programs. And so a lot of the development efforts into ES6 are trying to help make it a, be a better language for programming big things. And we'll see that when we talk about ES6 later in the course. So by default, most browsers support ES5. And the language is mostly single threaded. Uh, so you mostly, if you're writing uh, JavaScript, you kind of mostly won't think too much about parallelism because mostly your JavaScript is working single threaded. Uh, we'll show you where that's not the case and how you can do things in the background uh, in the course as well. Uh, and it's an imperative language. I can set a variable, I can adjust that variable. I can create a structure, I can modify the contents of that uh, of that structure. Um, that's different from uh, pure functional languages like Haskell or PureScript, uh, though there are functional languages that compile to JavaScript. JavaScript's quite popular as a compile target for languages. So these notes are going to go through the language fairly fast, as uh, many students might already be familiar with JavaScript, and many more of you will already know a language or two, perhaps uh, perhaps Python and Java, uh, for instance. Uh, if you're looking for something that goes a little bit more steadily as an introduction to programming, uh, there's quite a lot of tutorials out there on the web, and we'll have some links for those uh, for students who might be newer to JavaScript programming. So the first thing I'd like to say about the language itself, though, uh, it's dynamically and weakly typed. Uh, so if I was to define two variables, uh, so I could say var a is the string two and var b is the string two. And so this would declare these two variables. So let's just hop over to Repelit. Now, Repelit is a website that's going to let me write JavaScript on the left hand side and have it executed by my browser's native JavaScript engine on the right hand side. So the website here is just helping me to put the JavaScript in and edit it and run it through my browser. This isn't a separate system or the back end that's running it. This is my native browser's JavaScript. Uh, so let's copy those and let's paste them into the REPL. 
And if I run it, well, not much happens. I've declared two variables, but I haven't done anything with them. But if I was then to say, all right, give me variable A and run it, it's the string 2. Um, but though A here is assigned to be the string 2, it's not that A as a variable has a type of string. Um, the, the IDE might try and help me and suggest, oh, that's usually of type string. Uh, but I could, if I wanted, just say, I'm going to put the number 15 in there. And I could run that. And it hasn't complained. And A is now 15. And if I, let's print out A again. There it is. A is now 15. I've put a number in there, even though the variable originally contained a string. So it's dynamically typed. The type of things gets worked out um, at runtime based on what's happening with the object. Uh, but it's also weakly typed. So here I have declared... A and B as two strings. So A is the string 2, B is the string 2. Uh, question for you, what is going to happen if I ask it to work out A divided by B, even though those things are strings? Pause the video, think about your answer. Um, OK, let's keep going. Uh, now, the thing is, is that because this is weakly typed, uh, it's not going to complain about dividing these strings. It's going to try and do it. And so if I go and paste in A divided by B and I run it, I get the number 1. So what's happened is it said, OK, A is a string 2, B is a string 2. You've asked me to divide them. I can't divide strings. So to be able to divide them, I'm going to have to convert those to numbers first. And so it has taken the string 2 and converted it to the number 2. Uh, and the string 2 and converted that to the, uh, the number 2 in order to do the division. And so the type of this has changed along the way. Um, that's one of the things that can make it hard to reason about in terms of if you, if you write... Uh, JavaScript in an indisciplined way, uh, relying an awful lot on the type conversions it can make. Uh, it can be, you can put yourself in a situation where you're thinking, OK, what is that at the moment? Is it a string? Is it a number? Ah, oh, I can't remember. And some unexpected behaviours can happen in your code. Um, OK, so A and B are implicitly converted to numbers because we try to divide them and we get this answer 1. OK, here's a puzzler to suggest what I mean. I mean, this is some deliberately obscure code. Uh, but pause the video and have a think about what this is going to evaluate to. 17 plus the string apples is not equal to the string origins, uh, oranges plus the string foo. And if you've paused the video, uh, unpause the video and let work find out what the answer is. Let's, go, let's just go and paste that into my REPL here and let us run that. And of course, I get the string 18 foo. Uh, so if you were expecting the string 18 foo, congratulations. Uh, if not, this is what's happening. Um, so in brackets, uh, apples and oranges, those two strings, they're not equal. And so this part here, that is true. And so we get the Boolean true. 17 plus true. Well, I can't add a Boolean, but what I can do is I can convert that Boolean to a number and it converts to the number 1. And so 17 plus 1, I get 18. 18 plus the string foo. Well, if I want to, if I've got a number and I do a plus and with a string, the way it can work out how to do that, uh, you you know, you could try and convert the foo to a, to a number, but actually what it does is it goes, okay, plus here is string append. And so it converts 18 to a string. And so that is the, uh, the string 18 appended with the string foo and we get 18 foo. So this is what I mean about how if you were very indisciplined about how you write your JavaScript, you could get some unusual castings going on and some unexpected behaviours. Uh, so we kind of need to bear in mind, OK, this is JavaScript is a weekly type language. We need to supply the discipline to our code. Uh, so moral of the story, it's very easy to get your code in a tangle in JavaScript and just have weird results rather than a compiler error or an exception that you can debug. So you need to be very disciplined in how you code your JavaScript because there's no compiler to enforce the discipline for you.